let's move on. This paper we covered, so I'm not gonna go into the details anymore, but this is an overview of what we covered last session. And this was the policy gradient. So you were doing reinforce. Let's move to asynchronous methods for deep reinforcement learning. What is the idea? You are, you are still gonna do policy gradients, but the idea here is rather than having a single agent interacting with the environment, waiting for it to die or win the game or lose the game, we are gonna spawn multiple agents to interact with the environment in parallel and then uh, optimize over a shared set of policy. Let's see, a quick recap of, we just saw you can have value-based model-free methods or policy-based model-free methods. For value-based model-free, you have a Q function that you're approximating by a neural network that's gonna be called Q-learning or deep Q-learning. We use the Bellman equation to turn a reinforcement learning problem into a supervised learning problem. The whole objective is learning this Q. And then we had one step return into the future. And this is coming from the Bellman equation. But we saw an example last session that the reward could be very sparse. Actually, you can get your reward at the end of the game. So you have to wait for a long time before you see any rewards. You can expand on this formula, on this one step return and make it multi-step or n step return. Why is it helpful? Because if you receive a reward, it's having an effect on n preceding state action pairs. So every single reward that you receive is gonna correspond to multiple state action pairs. So it's giving you more feedback. That's one modification. For policy-based model-free methods, you model your policy. You say that I'm gonna put a neural network on my policy. And then your objective function is no more coming from the Bellman equation. It's coming from maximizing your expected reward or minimizing your expected cost, expected future cost or future reward. A simple version was reinforced algorithm. And basically what you're doing is coming up with an estimate of the gradient of your objective. But then because this expectation is with respect to your policy, you have to do that trick that the derivative of a function is the function itself times the derivative of the log of the function. And this is where the log is coming in and the expected value, you're dropping it because you're doing Monte Carlo. So this is an unbiased estimate of your gradient. But then we said this has a high variance. To reduce the variance, you're gonna subtract the baseline. How good is your return compared to a baseline? This is still gonna be an unbiased estimate of the gradient of your objective, but it has less variance compared to using RT only. For the baseline, it could be any function that doesn't depend on your actions. So you can put any function here that doesn't depend on your actions. It can depend on the state, but it shouldn't depend on your actions. So for instance, you can use your value. And this term here has a name. It's called advantage of action A in a state S compared to the average action. So that's your advantage. The return, we know that you can approximate it by your Q network. And this is the actual definition of the advantage that we saw last time and V is just your BT. The framework that we are gonna to cover today is called actor critic. So you have an actor, which is based on your policy. So you're gonna act based on your policy and then your B or your value is gonna criticize those actions. The idea was that you can spawn multiple actors in your environment and let them interact in parallel with your environment and let them asynchronously update their policy actually a shared policy. So you're gonna have a global shared set of parameters, theta and theta v. Theta are, your, are for your actor, your policy. Theta v are your, for your value. And then you don't want to go forever. You want your algorithm to stop at some point, at, let's say at t max. So you're gonna set capital T to be a counter. And then you start from zero. And then you're gonna have each thread on your computer is gonna be an actor. It's gonna be an agent. And each one, they're gonna have their own parameters for their policy and for their value. And then each one of those threads is gonna have their own respective step counter 
they're going to live in your environment for a while and then die or win or lose and collect rewards or get punished. So they're going to learn on their own. Initially, you set their gradients to be zero. They are going to inherit from the shared policy and the shared value. So you're just going to inherit some parameters from your uh, the global environment. And initially, T is one. So T start is going to be one. You get the state at the start. And then you're going to live in that environment for a while. You're going to take actions based on this policy. You're going to re receive rewards, go to the next step, and then increase your counter. Either you are in the terminate, terminal state or you have been living in that environment for too long, and then we are going to kill you, kill that threat. If it is the terminal state, there is nothing going to happen in the future, no rewards, no nothing. So that's going to be a return of zero. Otherwise, this is where you're going to call your value to have an estimate for the type of rewards that you're going to collect if you were to follow this policy. So that's just an estimate for what's going to happen in the future if this is a non-terminal state. And then you're going to go backwards. This might be a little bit confusing, but this is exactly the math that you see here. So what you're computing is this guy, this term here, but you're computing it backward. You first compute R, and then you multiply it by a gamma, and then add the previous guy, and then you keep iterating, and you go backward. You compute this term backward. The next step, this guy is going to become gamma squared, gamma ri plus ri minus one. And then you compute your r. You're going to use r in two fashions. This is your labels. You're going to use them to update your value, which is very similar to what you're doing here. That's your loss function, and you're doing mean squared error. So that's your mean squared error. And then the other guy is coming from this term here, the reinforced algorithm. It's going to be r minus the baseline times the gradient of your log of the policy. Each one is going to do their own job. As soon as their iteration is done, they're going to update the shared parameters asynchronously and then uh, either move to the next step or die or something is going to happen to them, to that threat. So in you're learning in parallel and collecting a lot of data. A little bit more details about this R. What you're writing here is basically nothing but the advantage and the advantage, you are computing it by V of ST, which is this term here. And that R is going to end up being the summation of your returns plus an estimate of the future, which is coming from the future. What's going to happen if you uh, don't actually simulate, but estimate what's going to happen in the future. That's this term. You can actually add another entropy term for your agent to explore more. And this is just the policy. The policy is going to be conditioned on the state. And it's going to give you a probability distribution on your actions. And then you want your actions to be as diverse as possible. So what I'm going to ask you to do as homework is watch these three videos to actually see what type of problems you are solving using this framework. OK, any questions?